Welcome to Web of Stories. My name is Melinda and today I'm here with a book review. I'm going to be talking about California Golden by Melanie Benjamin. Um, I was given an electronic arc of this book from Delacorte Press through NetGalley um, in return for an honest review. This book, I am scheduling this video to come out on August 7th. This book will be released on August 8th. So if you see this today comes out, the next day it will be out. <laughs> so uh, let's start with this. what this book is. This is about surf culture in the 1960s and mostly in California, although there are some, they do go to Hawaii at times. Um, it's not just about surf culture. There's also some counterculture issues. We focus on the Donnelly girls. This is a mother and two daughters. The mother, Carol, very much is a surfer and that's what she wanted to be. But like many women of that time, you know, once she became a mother, that was her expected role and she really struggles with that. Her older daughter, Mindy, uh, like her mother, loves to surf and is very, very talented with it. But she's also sort of the glue that holds the family together. She feels very responsible for her younger sister, Ginger, who's not the talented uh, surfer that she and her mother are, but is the pretty one and is the baby and is the one that, that is sort of the center of Mindy's life. As, as young children, I think like 10 and eight, um, Mindy and Ginger realize that their mother could leave them for this other world that she wants of surfing. So they come up with the plan, which is they are going to become surfers so that their mother, if they, their mother leaves, their mother will take them with her. Um, and from that point on, they're set on a trajectory. As they get older, uh, Mindy has great success as a surfer. Ginger, however, chooses a different path. Um, she hooks up with a certain person who very much becomes the center of her life. His name is Tom. I don't want to go too much into that um, because going any further would be a spoiler. So the question at this point is, are these women going to come back together again? What's going to happen? So there's a lot about this book that I liked. I will be honest, I don't have a lot of interest in surfing. Um, and my idea of that period in time is completely the Brady Bunch episodes where they go to Hawaii. <laughs> and not that this book changed that, it just added a lot more color to it and really beefed it up. Um, the surfing culture was not as homogenous as you may think. There's like two different factions. There are the people who believe that, that they are the true surfers who oddly are the white guys in California, but then the Hawaiians who really are the true surfers, they like don't like them and the, it's all the thing. Yeah, it's all the thing. Um, it really doesn't make that much sense, honestly. Um, not saying the book doesn't make sense, but just saying the, the view of the people, the, the Californians who think they're the true surfers, that doesn't make a lot of sense, but it didn't then, so whatever. Um, so I loved the way Benjamin brought this book to life. I mean, the. It just was so vivid, her descriptions, her sense of place. As I said, it's mostly Southern California, uh, Laguna and Malibu, but we also go to Hawaii. So, um, and we, a little bit in Vietnam. <laughs> Can't forget about Vietnam. So a lot of the, it, a lot of that sense, that sens sensual, not sensual like sexy, but sensual like your senses detail is there. There's this one passage where she describes, um, one of the women is, is getting up and being ready to surf a wave. And she describes the wave as a dragon. And I thought that was so effective. Um, I also really love the character of Mindy, not just because we share a name. Uh, my name growing up was Mindy, uh, my family of origin, and some of my oldest friends still call me Mindy. <laughs> Even though I go by Melinda now, but Mindy in the book, her real name is Melinda. So not just because we share the same name, but I am really glad that the names of the sisters weren't switched. <laughs> um, Mindy is, again, she has, she does some not great things at times. Um, she's someone who's a bit of a, a, I don't want to say schemer because I think that that has a very negative, in America, scheme has a negative connotation. Um, but she plans things out. She's like, I have something I have to achieve and I will do anything I need to to achieve that thing. And that does not always work in her favor. Um, so she's not a perfect person, but she is driven and she is the one person who is functioning in this book. <laughs> so um, I really liked Mindy. I thought she was a fantastic character. And then that's this is where this book starts to fall apart for me. 
Um, honestly, in quantity, there were more things that I liked than disliked about this book, but the things that I disliked this book about this book were really big deals. And those two things were Ginger, the sister, and Carol, the mother. So Ginger, I get why Ginger, Ginger just wants to be loved. She wants to be, doesn't want anyone to leave her and she wants to be loved. And I get that. I get how she gets to that point from her, from her past. That all makes sense. But then the way it's expressed through the rest of the book doesn't make sense to me. Um, plus this guy she hooks up with, Tom, is an over the top unreal. I mean, he's just very over the top. There's no way I can believe that this character is realistic. It just, it's like so out there. Um, not to say there weren't people like him, but I think he's just like a very amped up version of another person, but amped up to the point that you're like, really? Really? Um, but I found Mindy to be such a, or not Mindy, excuse me. I found Ginger to be such a pathetic character that she just, A, confused me because I did not understand why she was doing the things she was doing, but B, just irritated me. Um, so that was hard, but that wasn't as bad as Carol. So Carol is their mother. And as I said, Carol wanted very much, she actually wanted to be an athlete. She's introduced to surfing later. She was going to be a professional, like baseball player, like, you know, league of their own sort of thing. Um, but then she got pregnant which was very much treated like she had no part in this. I'm not quite sure why that happened. She was not, she was, I mean, this wasn't a, con it was a consensual, a consensual event that caused her pregnancy. Um, so, you know, and then she has to be a mother. She has to get married and be a mother. And she has another, another daughter, obviously. And um, that setup of women in this time period having to not be able not being able to follow their dreams because they became mothers is believable and all that and I have sympathy towards that but that's not what's going on here um Carol is and it took me a while to realize this but Carol is a sociopath um and it's not because she didn't want to have children and it's not because she was not satisfied as being a mother it is because Carol is completely oblivious to the feelings of anybody else uh, the impact her actions make on anybody else, and sometimes I think the existence of anybody else. And it was so infuriating just to watch this over and over again. She is very much the villain in the early parts of the book as Mindy and Ginger are growing up. And honestly, I am okay with that. Like, I would be okay with that if that was a tra trajectory. But then we get a whole section of the book where we start getting a rehash of everything from Carol's point of view very much felt to me like Benjamin was trying to, if not redeem, at least excuse Carol. And it, it fell flat for me. It did not work. I also, as a reader, was offended by it. I was like, no, I don't buy this at all. And I really didn't, you know, I, I we were asked to excuse something that is not excusable. If this were a case of Carol, like, just being just just being angry and resentful that she couldn't that she had to be a mother. Yes, I get that. But her actions towards everybody, especially her daughters, um, it goes beyond into something else. As I said, she's a sociopath. Um, and the fact that Benjamin at the end tried to make her not that really did not set well with me. And it's too bad because there's a lot of things I did like about this book. I ended up giving this book a C plus. Um, I don't feel that I can recommend this book, although do, do judge, listen to other people, see what other people think. Maybe my issues won't be your issues. Um, although there's enough in this that I did like that I am willing to give Melanie Benjamin another try. I may try one of her other books um, and see what I think of that because she can write. Um, I just think that she missed the mark on it, in such a way on two of these characters that it was just the weight that brought this book down. Um, so there you go. Those are my feelings about California Golden. I wish it was more of the summer beach read I was hoping it would be, but it is not. Um, thank you for listening to this. If you've read or you know, will be reading Cal California Golden and agree or disagree with me, please let me know in the comments below. Just keep it classy. I always like to hear what other people think. And thank you so much. Uh, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.